Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to add and subtract decimals and whole numbers. We will start with adding and then move on to subtracting. So let's get right into it here. Now, whenever we have an addition problem involving a decimal and a whole number, so either a decimal plus a whole number or a whole number plus a decimal, we use the same steps that we use when adding two decimals. We line up the decimals, use placeholder zeros, and add. Let's jump into number one, where we have 17 and 43 hundredths plus eight. So let's set this problem up by lining up the decimals. So we have 17 and 43 hundredths plus eight. Now, how do we line up the decimal for our whole number here? Eight. Well, remember, decimals come after a whole number. They come after the ones place. So the decimal is right here for eight. So we have eight and then the decimal. So our decimals are lined up now and our problem is lined up, but it does look a little offset since 17 and 43 hundredths goes to the hundredths place and eight only has a digit in the ones place. So we can use two placeholder zeros after the decimal. That way eight goes to the hundredths place as well. Now those two zeros to the right of the decimal are not changing the value of eight. That still has a value of eight. So we're able to do this. Now our problem looks more lined up. And now we can add. We will start with the hundredths place. So three plus zero gives us three. Four plus zero gives us four. Bring the decimal straight down. It's lined up throughout the entire problem. Then we have seven plus eight, that's 15. And then one plus one gives us two. So we end up with 25 and 43 hundredths. So 17 and 43 hundredths plus eight equals 25 and 43 hundredths. Now, whenever we have an addition problem involving a decimal and a whole number, the decimal digits are going to stay the same. So for example, number one, we end up with 43 hundredths. That's because eight didn't have any decimal digits. So it's just going to be, again, 43 hundredths. Basically, we're just adding the whole numbers. 17 plus eight is 25. And then again, we have 43 hundredths. So something to keep in mind whenever we are adding a decimal and a whole number. Moving on to number two, we have 126 plus 35 and 9 tenths. Let's set this problem up by lining up the decimals. The decimal goes after the whole number, after the ones place. So for 126, it goes after the six. So we have 126 decimal, and then we line up 35 and 9 tenths. So the decimals are now lined up. So let's use a placeholder zero in the tenths place for 126. Now both of our numbers go to the tenths place and we can add. We will start by adding the tenths place. So zero plus nine gives us nine. Bring the decimal straight down. Then we have six plus five, that's 11. Then we have one plus two is three, plus three is six, and then a one in the hundreds place. So we end up with 161 and nine tenths. So 126 plus 35 and nine tenths equals 161 and nine tenths. So there's how to add decimals and whole numbers. Let's move on to subtraction. 
So here's our section on subtracting whole numbers and decimals. So either a decimal minus a whole number or a whole number minus a decimal. Now, whenever we have a subtraction problem involving a decimal and a whole number, we use the same steps we use when subtracting two decimals. Line up the decimals, use placeholder zeros if necessary, and subtract. Let's jump into number one where we have 13 minus 4 and 64 hundredths. Our first step is going to be to set this problem up by lining up the decimals. Now we have a whole number here, 13. Remember, the decimal point goes to the right of the ones place, to the right of the whole number. So we can put a decimal point right here for 13 that we can use to line this problem up. Typically, if we just have a whole number, we write it without a decimal point. But here, we are using the decimal point to line up the problem. So we are including it. Now we can set this up. So we have 13 decimal point minus 4 and 64 hundredths. Now at this point, do not just bring the six and the four straight down into the answer. There are actually zeros above those digits. So we will need to go through the subtraction process. So our problem is lined up, the decimals are lined up, but it does look a little offset here. So we can use placeholder zeros to make this look a little more lined up and organized. And we actually need these zeros in order to go through the subtraction process. So since four and 64 hundredths goes to the hundredths place, we need two zeros right here. That way 13 goes to the hundredths place as well. Now those zeros to the right of the decimal point are not changing the value of that 13. That's still 13. So we're able to do this. We're not changing the value of anything here. Now we're ready to subtract. So let's start with the hundredths place. We have zero minus four, which we're going to need to borrow. So we need to go all the way over to the three, borrow. This is now two. Then we have 10 here, which is now nine. And then we end up with 10 minus four, which gives us six. Then we have nine minus six, that gives us three. Then we have our decimal. Bring the decimal straight down into the answer. The decimal is lined up throughout the entire problem. Then we have two minus four, which we need to borrow. So we borrow from this one, which is now zero. And now we have 12 minus four, which gives us eight. And this is our final answer, eight and 36 hundredths. So 13 minus four and 64 hundredths equals eight and 36 hundredths. Let's move on to number two, where we have 28 and eight tenths minus nine. So let's set this problem up by lining up the decimals. Now for our whole number, nine, the decimal goes right here. So we have 28 and eight tenths minus nine, and then the decimal point. Now we need a placeholder zero. But before we write that in, notice the difference between number one and number two. For number one, we subtracted from the placeholder zeros so we needed to borrow. For number two, we're going to end up with eight minus zero in the tenths place, which gives us eight. So we will end up with eight in the tenths place of our answer. So depending on if we have a whole number minus a decimal or a decimal minus a whole number, that impacts how these problems are going to work out. So something to keep in mind. Since 28 and 8 tenths goes to the tenths place, let's use a placeholder zero right here. That way nine goes to the tenths place as well. And now we can subtract. So we start with eight minus zero in the tenths place. That gives us eight. 
then we can bring the decimal straight down. Next, we have 8 minus 9, which we need to borrow here. So this 2 is now a 1, and we have 18 minus 9. That gives us 9, and then we have a 1. So our final answer, 19 and 8 tenths. So 28 and 8 tenths minus 9 gives us 19 and 8 tenths. So there you have it. There's how to add and subtract decimals and whole numbers. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.